like you've failed is a miserable way to feel, even when you know what you're doing is going to be risky. On the second day of my underwater testing project, things were so awful that I just wanted to give up and go home. It's not as though I've never... We made it to the Bahama Islands by September. I had money, I had other scientists to help me, and I was certified as a diver who could live in the undersea's hydro lab for a week. Everything went smoothly until the second day I was there. Then we were taken out for a diving test. For the first time, after months of getting ready, I felt I might have made a big mistake. Those of us who were going to live in the Hydro Lab were put through a series of very difficult diving maneuvers to make sure that we could survive in case of emergency. We had to swim very fast through the coral and through caves. Then, when we were very worn out, we had to perform buddy breathing and mass clearing exercises. By the time we were halfway through the test, I was exhausted. My head was throbbing with a horrible headache and I was having a hard time trying to breathe. I would have given anything to get back up to the surface after that test. But instead, we had to follow the director down to the Hydra Lab. He wanted to show us how we would live in it when we moved in the next day. Inside, I was feeling very trapped and sick. I couldn't even concentrate. I was afraid. But at the same time, I couldn't admit that I'd made a mistake. I was the project leader, and nobody was going to get the job done if I wasn't there to do it. I was relieved just to be safe back on board the support boat. But I felt sure that the project was failing, and me with it. morning I decided I couldn't quit at least not yet everybody else seemed so confident and I hadn't told anybody how frightened I was they started moving the equipment out to the hydro lab site in preparation for our moving in When I saw my equipment going down for good, it seemed there was no turning back. I just kind of went over the side with it. I felt anxious, but I kept very busy. Tony and Mike, the other scientists, needed me to tell them what to do, and I found myself giving all the directions. We must have laid a million miles of cable on the ocean floor. I began to feel better. The tests were all going well, and suddenly it just dawned on me that here it was. We were working and living underwater. 
Base to Hydrolab. Base to Hydrolab. Rail check, over. Hydrolab to base. This is Barbara. And everything's okay down here. Systems are gurgling away. Fine, anything you need. Mike and Tony are outside working now. And we're having a problem with communications. We need some of that underwater paper. Yeah, we can send that down by the first boat in the morning. We'll send it down by the big pot. Okay, over and out. We were winning. We were doing what people told me was going to be very difficult or impossible to do. I could look around and I could see the respect of the people that I was working with. I actually began to have fun. After seven days, we all felt as though we really belonged down there on the ocean bottom. I never would have believed it, but the last thing I wanted to do was pack up the instruments and go home. sound foolish, but the whole Hydrolab experience meant something more to me than just a successful project. It actually changed my whole life. More and more I'm taking on projects I wouldn't have dreamed of handling a few years ago. Hydrolab proved to me that I can do a lot more than I thought I could. Even things that scare me, and I really feel good about myself. Mm -hmm.